All right, welcome everyone to the October 28th TSC call. Uh, I see some new faces. Uh, I see some folks who aren't on the TSC. You're all welcome here. Um, we, there's just two things that we have to live by as we uh, walk through this. The first one is the antitrust policy notice, which you see currently displayed on the screen. The second one is our code of conduct, uh, which you can find linked to in the agenda. Um, really, it just says, don't be a jerk. Um, and we can all get along just fine. So with that, let's, uh, let's jump into the announcements. Um, so the first announcement, uh, Rai, did you want to talk about? Sure. Uh, I'll be super brief. The Dev Weekly newsletter goes out every Friday, and uh, we are always looking for content. So if you have something appropriate for a developer audience and you would like to see it in the newsletter, um, leave a comment on the page and let me know. We'll make sure it gets in there. All right. Thanks, Rai. And Daniela, I think I've got a couple items on here from you. Sure. Well, you know, first I want to thank everybody for, for their support over the last few weeks. I know I've spoken to many of you, so thank you. Um, as you have probably seen, I have stepped up as the executive director for Hyperledger um, and also as GM of blockchain uh, healthcare and identity at the Linux Foundation. So I'm very excited about this opportunity. Um, I've worked with many of you over the last four years, um, along with, uh, with Brian and the rest of the staff here. Um, I will be conducting, I'll be organizing and conducting, putting together AMAs for the community um, over the next few weeks. Um, so that will be an opportunity for, for me to connect with uh, the maintainers and the other developers and contributors in the community as well. Um, many of you know I've been attending these TSC calls for the last four years and hopefully, um, you know, can continue to do so um, and participate and be available. Um, the other announcement that we made yesterday is, you know, based on some of the work that the task force, the what we call the white uh, paper task force put together. Uh, we did launch the uh, change the name of Hyperledger project to Hyperledger Foundation. Um, there is a blog on the website as well on on that change. Um, and I think it really helps um, the community and the ecosystem understand that Hyperledger is more than just one project or even multiple projects, that we really a community of technical projects, of special interest groups, working groups, member companies, uh, really work all working towards the same goal and mission uh, of, of Hyperledger. So I do encourage you to also read the uh, Hyperledger Foundation. We'll be putting out additional content and video explaining um, some of the uh, new programs that we'll be putting into place. Um, and the other thing um, that we're putting into place is obviously more resources to help support the community. So one of the things that I'd like to announce, um, and he's been working um, in, in this role for a while now, but we're finally making it public. And the announcement is that we have promoted or I have promoted David Boswell. Um, to be um, 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 Senior Director of Community Architecture. Um, so David, I don't know if you have a couple of words or something that you'd like to say. Yeah, you are on. Um, but I think it's a great opportunity for um, our project maintainers. Many of you have been working with David and Rye very closely over the last few months. Um, so encourage you to do that. You'll, you'll see us you know, providing more programs and services um, to really help um, you know, uh, achieve our, our, our mission uh, as well. David, you want to? Yeah, you? thanks for that. I'm, I'm really excited about the role. You know, what I'm really, uh, you know, enjoy about being involved in an open source community is really providing support for people to do what they, you know, are wanting to do if they show up and are excited about getting involved. I want to make sure that there's, you know, a path forward for them. And so, you know, uh, uh, really interested to hear what the TSC is wanting to do uh, and how I can support and just, you know, how do we go out there and make the community, you know, healthy and vibrant and, and allow people to do what it is they want to do when they show up. So uh, I'm excited about being in the new role and, and here to help support and uh, um, yeah, looking forward to being part of those conversations with the TSC and others about what we can do going forward for the rest of this year and next year to, to, you know, make the community everything that it can be. 
Thank you, David. And, and just a reminder, you know, staff, myself, and the rest of staff are here in, in service of our community, including our technical steering committee. So, um, you know, I, I look forward to, to hearing from you um, to, um, to make sure that we're serving your needs as well. All right, great. Well, congratulations go out to both Daniela and to David on their uh, new roles. And uh, we look forward to uh, working closely together and figuring out how we can uh, make the community better. So um, congratulations again. Thank you. All right. So the next topic, uh, David, do you want to cover the main hitter orientation call? Sure. So as we were just talking about, you know, one of the ways that we can provide more support is to, you know, have more regular conversations with maintainers. So Ryan and I earlier this year started having uh, maintainer calls. We've had two so far. We think maybe quarterly is the right frequency for those, although we can adjust as needed. So the next quarterly maintainer orientation call is happening next, no, uh, next week, so November 4th. And we thought there were two topics that maybe would be good to discuss, although these are open calls. So if you as a maintainer have a question, you're like, hey, I really want to know about X and you know, this is a forum for that. So please, just because we have two topics on the agenda, feel free to bring other topics there that you would like to discuss. But the two topics we thought were relevant were talking about the project lifecycle. There have been some changes recently that the TSC has made. So how do we help you know, distribute that information out to the projects? And we see that people have questions about this. Just yesterday on the TSC list, UE sent a question about, hey, I'm a lab and how do I become a project? So it seems like people in the community could you know, use this information and have a conversation about it. So we can get together and talk about the project life cycle. Uh, and, sorry about my dog barking, and want to talk about what the maintainer summit could look like next year. We haven't met in a while and it's time so come to the call and we will have discussions about uh what you'd like to see in the summit thanks david i'm gonna mute and now <laughs> wouldn't be a call without a dog barking i think uh right a tsc call so um no worries um all right so with that are there any other announcements that anyone has specifically they'd like to to bring up at this point i would like so to this is all no i think I, and I apologize if I missed it, but Daniela mentioned that uh, the Hyperledger name changed from project to foundation. We also published a new uh, charter. I don't know if this has been announced, but you know it's been an ongoing point of discussion that the charter was talking about we only developing like one blockchain framework. And now you know it's official. We are not just doing one framework. And uh, in fact, it's the, the scope is somewhat extended beyond just blockchain. Uh, so it's talking about multi-party systems. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to, and again, if it's been brought up before, I apologize, but I don't remember that has been, been mentioned, so. No, that's great. I don't know, uh, thanks for that. I think that beyond that, um, Daniel also mentioned the white paper out there as well. Uh, that was worked on by the task force that TSC created. Um, so you know, have a have a read through that. It also, I think, mentions now the the new name, the Hyperledger Foundation, and um, so it's it's great to see that some of the work that we did last year uh, with the TSC is uh, being now announced and, and out there in an official capacity. So, um, Rye, I think you also had something you wanted to say. Yep, uh, I just we yesterday opened up this position to the public and uh, it is doing what I do. And if that is of interest, or if you have a friend that is involved in, into open source, uh, we're hiring. So I will post this link in the uh, in the TSC chat. All right, great, thank you. Bye. Uh, any other announcements that people have? All right, so it sounds like there's none. Um, so we do have some quarterly reports that came in. Uh, Hart, thanks for keeping me honest with the cactus one. I completely skipped over it in the uh, the list. So we'll we'll keep that one on there definitely for, for next go around. I think Explorer, we should probably also keep on there for the next go around uh, as there's still people who haven't yet reviewed that. 
I think Fabric had the most reviews when I looked at it shortly before the call. But let's let's go down um, the call because or down the list because I think there are folks on the call who are here to represent each of these. So um, for the the folks who have had the opportunity to review the Explorer um, project report, are there any questions that exist on that? All right, I'll take the resounding silence as a no questions. Uh, and the, the Explorer team did not have any questions for us as well. Um, so how about Fabric? Are there any questions on the Fabric report? No questions on that one either? Okay. Um, anyone who had the opportunity to read the uh, cactus report, any questions there? I know they did have a question for us. All right, no one has any questions for them. Uh, so their question for us was about the 1.0 release uh, that they're working on for cactus. So uh, Arno, you had replied in the comments or in the reply that there are currently no requirements from the TSC for projects moving to 1.0 release. Um, I, I do recall that there were some steps on the, the Hyperledger side for projects moving to the 1.0. So um, David and Rai, I, I called you out on a comment just for um, maybe working with the Cactus team on whatever the right processes are for moving a project to, to 1.0, so. Yep, um, we <clears throat> will do that. And thank you because I, I would have missed it. Okay, great. So um, Peter Hart, um, Ryan and David will work with you towards whatever needs to happen for, for 1.0. Hi, hey, Tracy. Uh, I just want to ask a clarifying question regarding the first sure. comment that Arnold made. Um, it, it wasn't clear to me what Arnold was referring to as far as the, the, the requirements. It sounds like it has to do with um, pr promotions and marketing. Just want to confirm that. Yeah, so I have to admit, I don't remember exactly the status. We would have to check the documentation, but initially we had this notion of first major release and uh, that, that was a big deal because it was typically when we would have a major announcements by the Hyperledger organization with the, you know, the blog post and so on. And uh, later on, there was, you know, the, the situation become a lot more confusing because there were projects like Bezu who didn't even like, you know, they had already uh, won all before. They even came to Hyperledger. They didn't want to restart the numbering. And so the question became, okay, does it matter which, whether it's the first major or not? And then along the discussion, we said, but wait, there are two different aspects to this. There is, you know, the major version release, and then there's the notion of whether we promote it or not. And the TSC really has no saying into what should be promoted, you know, promoted by, by communication team with the hyperledger staff. So we try to, to disentangle all of this. And, uh, and so that's where I think we are. So as a result, I don't think that there is any actual requirements that projects need to fulfill to go through this, you know, major refer, first major release because it's it's kind of like a project, uh, uh, you know, bound uh, concept at this point. Yeah. Thanks for to them. That's my recollection of where we stand, but. Yeah, I, I think you're right there, Arno. Um, yeah, no, you have your hand up. Yeah, um, this wasn't about cactus. This was when we're done talking about cactus and whatnot. Okay. Uh, any other any other comments, questions about cactus? Hart? Hey, yeah, I'll just say to answer Jim's question, Arno is exactly right. To summarize, we used to have to require a, a TSC approval for a one data release. I see. Gotcha. Thanks. Thanks for that. 
Okay, any other comments on Cactus before we let Dano have the floor? All right, Dano, I think it's yours. So I did ping Attila um, to, he said he's gonna have the caliper report this week. It's probably gonna mm -hmm. be up next week at this point, obviously. Um, but when it comes to on time or late quarterly reports, if people prefer a ping the week before who previously filed it or a ping once it's late, it's probably a process question for the teams to consider. Anyone have any thoughts on whether they'd like, uh, if you're someone who has filed a, a report before a ping the week before it's due or um, only a ping after it's late? So I, I will point out <clears throat> that uh, I do have the calendar reminders set for one week before it's due uh, and then the week that it is due. So there are two emails that go to the project list uh, before they're due, so. Okay. Right, but what I did for um, Explorer, Caliper, and Cactus is I spent a, sent a personalized email to the person who filed it last. And I think that's, that's the question is, how, how do we want to escalate this? Is the uh, automatic reminders enough? Or how much sooner would people prefer the personalized attention? Can I ask a basic question? When you say ping demo, did you mean sending an email or ping on yeah. the chat? Direct personal email, yeah. Gotcha. I think that would be really helpful. Before yeah. or after? Especially if this, can be, if, if this can be automated so it doesn't fall on someone, someone like Rice's shoulder all the time. Yeah, I was going to say, I think the automated uh, reminder one week out is good. And then uh, a personal one-to-one -one email, maybe when it's when it's past due. Okay. Anyone Let's else have any thoughts? Nice. All right, Dano. Let's get out. Continue to ping uh, directly after they're late. We've ever filed the last. Sounds good. Jim, do you still have a question or just your hand still raised? Yeah, sorry. I'll, I think uh, beforehand will be helpful was my, my vote. Sorry. Oh, beforehand was your vote. Yeah. Um, an automated message goes out beforehand, however. So. Right. I, I, think... will, I will ping you beforehand. All right, uh, David Boswell. I just had a comment in general about the reports, not about one in particular, although I did see that Explorer did reference it this time. Sometimes when a report comes in, you see something along the lines of, it would be great if we had more contributors or we could use some help with more contributors. When that happens, is there anything that we wanna do? I mean, as far as the Explorer report goes, I did reach out to the person who filed it and just mentioned that we had started these contribution campaigns recently and we could support with a, a Explorer campaign if they were interested. But I did, did wanna note that sometimes those do show up in reports. And is that something that we as staff and or the, we as TSC, you know, how do we wanna to respond to those when they come up? Is there support we wanna offer basically? Yeah, I think we've had this discussion many times in the past, um, but I am open to hearing uh, new ideas, new thoughts on responding to that. I do uh, definitely like, David, the direction with the can contribution campaigns that you've been working on with different labs and different projects um, to help try and get people to, to come in. But if there's other ideas slash suggestions that people might have on ways in, of getting more attention to projects slash uh, contributors to those projects. Happy to discuss that. Right, I don't see any additional hands going up. Um, maybe we can uh, have that conversation at 
uh, some point when people have had a chance to think about that again. But yeah, I think in the meantime, David, I, I do like the the contribution campaigns. And we can bring this up in the maintainers call next week too. We can ask people, hey, if you put that in your report, what sort of help are you wanting? Maybe maybe turn it around and ask people who are you know flagging those in the reports what what sort of help they could use. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Is there anybody from the Explorer team who uh, has a comment on maybe answering that question? All right, looks like maybe we don't have representation then. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's bring that up then in the maintainers um, call, David. All right, um, so next on the uh, list here is, uh, Sachi did put in their uh, report. Thank you, Andrea, for bringing that to our attention a week early. So we will definitely keep this on for next week and uh, make sure that everybody has had a chance to review and ask any questions for that as well. Um, but let's move into the discussion topics. So first on the list here, uh, a TSC election retrospective. So every year after the TSC election, we kind of do a, a retrospective to see things that went well, things that could be improved uh, as we think about what this might look like again next year. So Rai, if you wouldn't mind, um, Sure. Um, so I, I will, the very short version is that it went a lot better than previous years. Um, mostly around because we had uh, good tooling, better tooling. The OpaVote platform uh, gives us a lot of information that the previous platform didn't. And using insights uh, made getting the initial contributor list much easier. I know that uh, David Boswell spent quite a bit of time um, getting the email addresses into the tool that we were using, uh, which is name escapes me right now. Um, and the other thing, which I really think, uh, helped was that the OpaVote tool sends a reminder email every three days, if you haven't voted. So if you look at this graph of from the election start to when the votes happened, um, it's every 72 hours, you know, we got more votes. So I thought that was that was pretty cool and and pretty nice. Things that didn't go so well, um, we had pretty low participation. Um, I, I don't have the number off the top of my head, but it was uh, lower than every other year by percentage. And uh, there aren't a lot of not much space to add new voices to the TSC. Um, although we had record uh, turnover and and new members. Um, there's not a lot of space there. Uh, and I think that was your comment. So Tracy, if you wanted to speak to that. Uh, so yeah, no, I think that, um, you know, obviously we've got 15 spaces in the TSC. Um, we had uh, four new folks join us this year and we will talk to them and, and find out more about them as we go through. Um, but, you know, that's uh that's less than a third, right, of new new voices that we're hearing as we come into the into this year's TSC. Um, I, I just you know think that there's a question around if there's anything that we want to do about that. Um, and and Rai, I think the the numbers were out of the 976 emails that got delivered, 23% um, of the folks actually voted. Right. on this year's election yep. um and you know obviously 30 percent of the people i guess i'm looking at the, the numbers 30 percent of the people actually clicked on the link to vote but only 23 percent of those voted um i'm sorry 23 percent of the total voted uh and, and so you know i think that you know people saw the election email they uh, you know, the number of people who opened it was 59%. The number of people who actually clicked on the link was 30%. And then the number of people who voted was 23%. So I think that, you know, there's still some work to do as far as getting uh, people who have contributed interested in participating in the vote. 
Um, and so I'd, I'd really love to hear kind of from the, the TSC members and other folks, you know, are there things that we think we can do better in the future or differently in the future? Cool, thanks. And um, I agree. And uh, one of the, the interesting things to me was if I looked at, there are a lot of people who uh, opened the email and went to the thing. There were, obviously there were 70 people who, who went to the vote page who didn't vote. But there are a lot of people who opened the email each time and didn't, and didn't click the link. And we had uh, 48 people, or I'm sorry, 37 people opt out from future communications. So they didn't want to hear from us. Um, so Hart. Hey, yeah, I was just going to say that uh, in terms of people like starting the voting process and not finishing, um, it was a little, uh, you know, when I did it, I had to have like multiple tabs open, right? Um, because the the voting site didn't have any of the bio information or, or anything like that on it, right? Um, so if I'm a voter and I don't know everyone, I have to, you know, constantly look back and forth. I have to find the TSC election website, which has the, the people's information on it. And I have to pull that up and I have to look through everything, right? Um, so maybe if we had that in a, a simple place, like with, if, if we could somehow embed that election, that might be a lot, sorry, if we could somehow embed that in the election so people didn't have to, uh, to navigate between a lot of different sites, that might help bridge the 23 to 30% gap. Uh, that's an excellent observation. And uh, I had that option available to add a, uh, a bunch of HTML to the email and I didn't do it. Um, so next year, uh, I, you're right. I, I don't think I can link the, the people's names directly to their nominating statement, but it's certainly pretty easy to put a link in the email that goes out to, uh, to help direct people. Um, Jim? Yeah, thanks. Uh, also, uh, feedback on the 70 that didn't seem to finish the voting. For my team, we had a constant uh, struggle from multiple people that said, do I have to fill in all 25 slots before I submit? A lot of them didn't understand you can stop at any point. So some of them, uh, I don't know about our team, uh, but I, I bet some people just just thought that's too daunting and just didn't didn't follow through and stop mid midway. Uh, so a, a simple, simple banner that says you don't have to fill in all 25, that would have helped. Okay, uh, thank you. I will make a note of that. Uh, I think Arun was next. Yep. Okay. Um, so uh, I had similar comment on on Opa. I basically had all the 29 options, and I did hear similar feedback from some of my team members when they wanted to vote. Um, in fact, they they were asking me, "Hey, it, you said it's 15, but here I see 29." Right, so apart from that, I have a couple of other comments to add here. I think we need some, um, I, I know this discussion also happened on the Hyperledger TSC chart room, where we wanted to identify what uh, what is the engagement level of those contributors. So um, if not to detail level to specific project, we should rather just identify if they contributed in recent times, are they continuously engaged with Hyperledger or is it just one-time activity that they did? That might help us in understanding some aspects. And um, another thing that I wanted to just add on to it is, uh, OpaVote was also used by Stack Overflow recently uh, in their community, one of their community uh, position elections. So they had uh, three positions open, so they, uh, so what they did was they, within their portal, the Stack Overflow, they had this voting option on the right. As soon as you visit that site for any questions or anything, it pops up and it says, hey, here is an opportunity for you to vote and select somebody from the community. Even though there were many people on the left side, it only asked me for two to three of them. And I did not have to relocate myself to any other URL. It was all through within the same portal. And it was all backed up through the OPA out. So I see an opportunity for us to continue in improving on that aspect. Maybe we redirect everyone to LFX Insights 
which might be interesting to people or um, we look around for a way where they can have their IP Ledger um, account or the Linux Foundation account profile to vote in the upcoming TSA election. I like that feature in, in Stack Overflow. That's all. Okay, thank you. I think Dano was next. Dano was next. Um, yeah, so I have two sub points. Um, Arun made most of one of my points. But as far as total votes cast, um, we're, this is the second highest. Uh, it's the lowest percentage wise, but that's because we had a lot of people. Um, it was what 235 for the first vote, which was the most votes cast ever, and 204, the 184, and now 227. So total people voting. And that feeds into the point that a roommate is I think we need to give some consideration to the commitment level of some of the people who are qualified to vote. Um, all it takes is one PR. And if you come into, like, say, Basu and you don't like the way that particular RPC is handling something and you want an extra option added, you can push a PR to do that, you're eligible to vote. Um, are we saying the people who do a casual uh, scratch my itch type commit are then obligated to vote in the hyperledger election and we're obligated to bring them in? You know, I think we need to have some, you know, if it's the maintainers and the regular committers that aren't voting, yes, that's a big problem. But, you know, I don't see the problem of the casual contributors not voting when they're entitled to. That's a good point. Uh, Kamlesh. So uh, I think uh, that election, uh, that OPPO vote UI screen should be simplified. Like instead of listing all the names, if you have only, people need to select only 15, for example. And other thing, like maybe there should be proper clarification, like what is this election? Because maybe the volunteer is there, but the voter is really not clarified what they are, whom they are choosing and what the purpose. So I think these two things could be, should be considered next time. Because like 60% open the election mail, but only 23% voted. That could be maybe 50% or 60% at all. Okay. Thanks. Arno? Yeah, I wanted to just kind of follow up on what Dano was talking about, because I, I wanted to say something a bit similar in the sense that I don't think we should stress out so much about so many people not voting. If anything, you could see this as a positive because if people thought something is going really bad here, they would actually step up and want to have a say. And so maybe the fact that there aren't so many people voting is rather a good sign. And I'll, I'll share with you, you know, the simple and they thought, but, you know, I'm a paragliding pilot. I'm part of an association within the U.S. of you know, related to this. And we have an election every year of directors and I barely ever vote. And because I'm happy with what they do, I'm thankful for people who have volunteered to do this job. And I, I, I hope the same is true here, so. Very well, could be. Uh, thanks, Arno. Hart. Yeah, I just wanted to agree with Arno and Dano, I think the barrier, you know, as long as we make the barriers easy and, and we make voting like seamless and not time confusing, or sorry, not not time consuming, then then I don't know that, you know, uh, that we should necessarily worry too much about uh, the voting percentage. That being said, I do think there are some things we can do that, you know, we can make the voting process faster and more streamlined. Um, but I, as, as Arno pointed out, I think if if the maintainers and the the core contributors are are contribute are are voting, then I think we're in good shape, and it's it's less important if somebody who has like one commit uh, and is is sort of you know they did a drive by commit and, and they disappeared. Well, th that's probably a little less important. Okay, yeah. So it sounds like um, you know more than anything, it's just a matter of making sure that the the ballots are clear making sure that there's links to uh, the information on the individuals that they're voting for. And maybe also a note that, you know, people can just vote for one person if that's all they really care about, right? Um, so it sounds like just uh, more information is, is what I have heard from the, the discussion. And, and so I think that's a good feedback for, for Rai and David as they move forward towards next year. Any other thoughts before we move on to the next topic?
No. Okay. So uh, Arun, I did uh, see in the TSC chat the, the comment about maybe the process for the, the new members. Um, so hopefully, uh, as you've been seeing, we go through the, our agenda. If you have comments, uh, questions, anything that you would like to raise, you raise your hand and, and you'll be called on as we go through. Uh, there's also, um, you know, responsibilities every week for reviewing the the project reports and, and checking yourself off there and making sure that, you know, uh, as things come through, you review those and ask any questions that you might feel are relevant to ensuring that the everything is well understood about what's happening in the project. Um, but I guess with that, I, I want to make sure that we also give our four new members an opportunity to uh, introduce themselves and um, maybe talk about um, well, we'll just introduce yourselves for now. We'll talk about as a as a whole kind of the goals and objectives that we want uh, for the TSC. So, Artem, uh, I think we'll start with you alphabetically. You come first. So. Hi, so I'm Artem Barger, and I used to work for for IBM for twelve years, and I recently quit to to start my new journey. Basically, I doing a startup in the blockchain area. And I'm, I've been involved in the uh, Hyperledger fabric since uh, uh, 2060, basically from the early beginning. Uh, and I'm really honored to, to join the TC uh, community. So I'm looking forward to working with uh, every one of you. All right, great. Thanks, Arnold. Peter, I see your hands going up because you're about ready to catch a train. You want to introduce yourself quickly? Peter, you're on mute. We lost. Oh, sorry, I, okay. I lost the window. Uh, I was having trouble unmuting myself. So yes, I would just wanted to say, I got to catch the train, so I'm going to introduce myself super quick. I'm Peter Sorovojvari. I am a technology architect at Accenture. And uh, I'm really glad to be on TSC. I am the maintainer, one of the maintainers of High Project Cactus. And I've been working on blockchain or related technologies for the past two and a half years. And before that, I, I used to be a traditional kind of architect slash database guy. So that, that was always my passion, storing data and distributed ledgers kind of feed into that just in a different way. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to working with everyone. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Peter. Uh, Jim, did you want to go next? Oh, sure. Thanks, Tracy. Uh, Jim Zhang. <clears throat> uh, uh, I, I've been involved in Hyperledger for a long time, I guess, since its beginning uh, as part of the maintainer team uh, for fa Fabric, but now I'm a retired maintainer for Fabric. Um, uh, Co-founder of Kaleido. Um, since uh, leaving IBM for Kaleido, I've been involved in Ethereum and Corda uh, in those communities. So now I cover all three <laughs> top protocols in the enterprise space. So really um, interested in seeing how I can help with uh, with growing the community. Uh, I'm also part of the uh, uh, Hyperledger Firefly, uh, one of the maintainers for fabric support uh, of Firefly. Looking forward to uh, working with everyone. All right, thanks, Jim. And come much. Uh, yeah, hello. Yeah, so uh, I'm Kamlesh and uh, I'm currently CTO of one blockchain startup based in India. And uh, I started my blockchain career with Hyperledger since when I working with the IBM team and uh, IBM India team actually on that time. And working with Hyperledger Fabric from a static 0.6 and uh, IBM blockchain on that time. And quite active in the community since then. And I also co-lead the Hyper India, India chapter with Arun. And as a company perspective, we do lots of pro product and project development for the financial services, supply chain, identity management use cases. So uh, using many Hyperledger projects in the web client deliveries. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And, and welcome to all of our new members as well as our returning members. and. Uh, you know, congratulations, Dano, for being elected to, to the vice chair role. 
And uh, I think the last item on our agenda is really just to talk about kind of the goals and objectives for uh, what we want to accomplish this, uh, this TSC year. Um, so this is really an open space. I, I think if we have some common goals and common objectives that will help us as we and think about kind of the agendas uh, for our meetings, think about the, the sorts of things that we want to, to cover and, and work through. Uh, so uh, this is really an open area for people to, to bring up their thoughts. Arun. Awesome. Um, yep. Yeah. I'll probably bring up this point of, of bringing in some of uh, some additional discussions that are currently ongoing or probably uh, that are just Stagnant or dormant for now. I know there were working groups which were uh, which used to be very active earlier, and um, maybe because the people who led those working groups got occupied on some other activities, and the transition did not happen to other folks within the working group, so they went into dormant state, right? And also, this was one of the feedback that our common um, opinion that many of the folks on the member summit also had in terms of hey, I need some information on getting started with this project. There, there are now too many projects within Hyperledger. I don't know how to choose them. If there were some documentation on that, I, it would help me get started. So what they're looking into is um, uh, a collection of resources which would tell them, hey, this is the use case and this is the project that they used and this is how they built it. I know some of them could be um, crucial for, for different organizations, they could it could be proprietary, but I believe restarting these dormant working groups could um, keep it going on. And many of these working groups in the past have produced really great documents and, and um, supplementary educational information that could be used. So yeah, I would like to see more of such um, things happening. And maybe if it requires us to invite those working group members to TSC calls, to revive them, we should probably do that. Okay. Other thoughts on goals or objectives that we want for the TSC? Jim? Yeah, thanks, Tracy. Um, one of my um, source of confusion with high pleasure is the, the the wealth of technologies that's available um, on one hand it's it's very powerful to have these things um, on the other hand for a a newcomer it's pretty difficult to figure out how how these different pieces fit in i think this goes to what arun was saying earlier um, one of the things we um I was also active in the uh, Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. Um, one of the things that the, the Alliance did was, that I think was pretty um, effective was sponsoring a project that ties together all these pieces and show this is how you build a comprehensive solution using the, the point features with each, each project. This is how you talk to a supply chain with Fabric. This is how you run the token with Ethereum. And this is how you do a DVP by using Cactus, uh, exchanging those to uh, tokens and, and trades atomically. Uh, and this is how you use Indy for the DID. Like we never have something that demonstrate this is, you know, this is how these things fit together. Uh, um, of course, that's from my point of view. I, 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 this may well have been discussed earlier, um, uh, but that, that's, that's something that's on top of my mind. Okay. Thanks, Jim. Sean. Sean, I saw you come off mute, but I cannot hear you. I don't know if it's me or. Oh, sorry, my automatic gain is. Yeah, you sound I'm... better. <laughs> my automatic <laughs> gain thinks I'm too loud. Um, so we, we talked about helping new users, um, but there's also a case to be made to attracting new new projects mm -hmm. and new new developers. There's a big um, world out there with blockchain, which are doing a lot of very interesting things. 
and not all of them are, are choosing Hyperledger. So I think there's a question of how do we attract um, more projects? Um, and how do we make Hyperledger a great place to host your, your, um, your, your blockchain project? Oops. Yeah, I, I, I agree, Sean. I think that's a very good point. Um, and one of the things that I think is top of my mind as well. So um, I, I would love to, as we continue this conversation, right, think about things that will help us in that regard. Um, Grace. Yeah, uh, first of all, I really like Jim and Sean's suggestions. Those sound great. Um, the one item that is top of mind for me is uh, diversity and inclusion and just encouraging, you know, and emphasizing those topics throughout the TSC. I know we start with the inclusive metric, but also, you know, if, if there are ways for us to advocate for or be a part of, you know, different um, diversity and, and inclusion efforts, I think that would be great too to keep uh, throughout the year. Okay. Thanks, Grace. Bobby. Hi. Um, I would like an initiative um, moving forward to continue with the breaking the silos where you cross projects over between working groups and the projects like we did with Firefly and the social impact with that project, the giving chain. Um, I think more of that where uh, the projects and the special interest groups um, actually get together to create some stuff and then explain it to the community. That would help also with uh, Jim's suggestion about how to showcase all of the wonderful things we're doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks Bobby. Arno. Yes, yeah, so um, yesterday during the uh, Hyperledger member summit, I was uh, serving as facilitator of one of the breakout session on threats. So, you know, the previous member summit, for those who don't know, we went through a whole SWOT exercise. And this time we went back to some of the outcome and tried to focus on what we might be able to do about some of the, the things that I came up. And uh, so I don't want to jump the gun that Daniela might feel like, hey, why is he even talking about this? Because, you know, there's probably a whole plan on how to process the outcome of what we did yesterday. But I wanted to share at least some of this because I thought it was interesting and relevant to the TSC and the question that is being raised now. In particular, one item that had been identified was, you know, we have had this, this uh, uh, the garden, the, you know, we call it the greenhouse. And it's been said multiple times, well, a greenhouse, you, you also need to trim and prune and so one of the questions that was raised was, well, how do we gracefully prune the garden? And um, I, I raised that question during the session yesterday and it was, uh, there was some interesting suggestion in terms of, you know, looking, turning to the community actually to get input as to, you know, what is really relevant? What is that we should do more and what we should do less maybe? And so, I don't know how this translates. I know it's a touchy issue. The TSC historically has kind of been shy about, you know, trying to bite that bullet because it, it very quickly turns political and then, and, and, you know, uh, it's easier to, to bring in new projects and so on than, than to turn some off. But uh, I thought I should bring that up. There was another one. I don't know if this one would really fall into the TSC scope per se, but uh, which had, it had to do with, you know, some of the challenges that people are experiencing setting up blockchain networks, not so much from a technical point of view, but more from an organizational point of view. And, uh, you know, it was shared that one of the challenges that the people experience today is they, they have to answer the very same questions from you know, potential customers and, 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 and business networks regarding security, privacy, you know, how does that relate to GDPR? And the question that was raised is, would then, it, it would be valuable for, for, for the, if the Hyperledger could develop answers to those questions and even like standards questions that could be submitted because often customers, it has been done in other areas, huh? So this concept is not new. 
is kind of like setting up questions and answers that could be shared with customers that would help getting everybody on the same page. So I just wanted to bring those as possible items that we might consider working on. Okay, good items. Uh, and obviously relevant to a number of people in the community, member companies, as well as other folks in the community. So thank you for that. Nathan. So I will risk abusing the greenhouse analogy here. And I think often we spend a lot of time pruning the weeds and looking at the problems that we have in our greenhouse. I think we need to spend some time as the TSC smelling the flowers and appreciating the plants that we have um, in that it would be good to give all the projects an opportunity to share the parts of their project that are the best things that they're doing or the most interesting technical challenges that they're, they're solving um, for the sake of creating some content that we can use to help recruit new developers and to help show the value that comes by collaborating cross project at Hyperledger. And I think if we focus some on the best parts of our projects, it will help us to understand and motivate each other to, to get more involved. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping that we can find some ways to do that beyond just the project reports that we've been doing all along. Okay, sounds like a good idea. Hurt. Hey, uh, thanks. I was going to talk about sort of fragmentation and cross project uh, collaboration, but I think Nathan and Arno basically did an excellent job of summarizing what I wanted to say. I think one thing we could address about this and feel free to, to say that this is, is crazy and, and not a good idea. Um, but I think it would be great if we had some incentive, uh, you know, or, or just some way for, for people to, to see other things. So I was what I was going to propose is what if we had some, uh, I don't know what to call it, but some program where we asked TSC members to go to at least one project meeting for which they are not a contributor a month. So hopefully this isn't too much of a burden on the TSC, but if everybody at the TSC goes to say, you know, a, a project meeting that uh, that they're not affiliated with at all, you know, they might learn something, other people might learn something, and this might sort of increase the, the collaboration across the TSC. And I was hoping we could get the LF staff to throw in like a carrot where they would treat like the, the TSC members that did this over some period of time to like dinner or, or drinks or something like that. All right, so I think I was supposed to say create that's crazy and that's not a good idea. Is that right, Hart? Um, but no, I, I think I think it makes sense. Um, and we have talked about that uh, previously in the uh, calls before. So, um, Dano, I think you'll be the last person to comment on this before the the meeting is going to come to a close. So, Dano. So I really like the idea. Um, I think it solves two problems. It gets the TSC aware of the other projects. And it builds a bridge between the other projects that are, don't regularly attend the TSC and the TSC. Um, you know, we kind of become liaisons back and forth. If, if things need to be shared from the project, we can become aware of it. If the TSC needs to share information to a project and they don't attend this meeting, there is another channel to do that if we have regular TSC guests in these calls and typically sit there. So I really, really like this idea. And I would encourage, you know, I don't think we should do it by assignment. But, you know, the incentives, I think, are going to be a great way to get people to do it. Yeah, and I think, you know, some of this probably lends itself to, to what Nathan said as well, right? Which is how do we bring kind of the knowledge of what the interesting things are that are going on in the projects back to uh, the TSC and uh, kind of smell the roses, if you will. So, um, I, you know, I, I think this has been a good discussion and I want to continue this discussion. I've taken some notes and I'll probably add them to our um, meeting minutes uh, because I do want to make sure that we're capturing these ideas and, and moving forward with them. There are two other things that did show up on the uh, agenda that we are not covering this week, but I do want you guys to take the opportunity to comment on the issue and the pull request. Uh, so there's a pull request for a new project proposal. Um, that is uh, looking to come in. It is the blockchain automation framework, which is a lab. Um, so please feel free to, to comment on that proposal. We'll have those folks come in and um, provide a, 
uh, presentation next week. And then there's also a task force that has been proposed um, that early this morning, uh, my time. So, um, you know, let's take a look at that issue as well. Hart, you have a comment? Yeah, just a quick question. Do you want us to comment directly on the PR? Uh, yes, please. Perfect, thanks. Yeah, and and like I said, we'll have the, the team come in and present kind of the, the project next week uh, to, to be able to give you an insight into exactly what it is um, and answer additional questions that you might have that, that maybe don't lend themselves so well to, to the back and forth discussion that we'd have in the PR. But uh, yes, definitely have a look at both the PR and the Hyperledger HIP um, repository and then the issue that showed up in the TSC for the decision log in the task force. All right, any final comments in the last minute that people have? All right, if not, then yeah, Nathan, go ahead. Uh, thanks, Tracy, for stepping up to be the chair of the TSC for this year and to Dano for um, volunteering for that service. Uh, we're glad to have you as, as the new chair. All right, thanks, Nathan. Yeah, Appreciate that. Um, and, you know, I, I appreciate the conversation too, right? I think this has been a really good start for the, the TSC and the conversation and the contributions that people are having. So I look forward to continuing our conversations and um, we will talk again next week.